Thank you, and good morning. Canadians know that we've been very focused over the course of this crisis on Canadians, on their jobs, on their continuing opportunity to work for both small and large employers. Today, I want to talk about the program that we're putting in place for large employers to help them get through this particularly challenging time. As you know, millions of Canadians work for large employers. We want to make sure that those large organizations get the bridge financing that they need so that they can keep Canadians employed. So the Canadian families know where their next check is coming from. So that the smaller businesses that supply our large employers have assurances as well. And that goes for their workers. That's why last week we introduced the Large Employer Emergency Financing Facility that will provide large firms with the liquidity to get through to the other side of this crisis and will protect Canadian jobs. Today, I'm here to announce that the application process is now open. Funds will be delivered through the Canada Enterprise Emergency Funding Corporation, a subsidiary of Canada Development Investment Corporation, CDEV, in cooperation with ICED and the Department of Finance. Large employers that have a significant presence in Canada with an annual revenue of $300 million or more, with financing needs of $60 million or more that have not been met by their usual means can apply. You can visit CDEV's website for more information. Aujourd'hui, nous annonçons que le processus de demande pour le crédit d'urgence pour les grands employeurs est ouvert. Les fonds seront versés par l'entreprise de la Corporation de financement d'urgence d'entreprise du Canada, une filiale de la Corporation de développement des investissements du Canada, en collaboration avec Innovation, Science et Développement économique Canada et le ministère des Finances. Vous pouvez visiter le site web de la CDEV pour plus de détails. LEAF, what we're calling the Large Employer Financing Facility, provides employers with a lower interest rate during this crisis. But we're putting in place loan conditions that will protect Canadians. 20% of the aggregate funding will be what's called senior debt, secured alongside existing secured lenders. This will ensure that existing lenders share in the risk. The remaining 80% will be an unsecured loan set with a low 5% interest rate in the first year to help companies bridge through COVID, increasing to 8% in the second year. In order to help companies keep cash available during the crisis and recovery, cash that can be used to create jobs and uh, do that as business picks up, they have the option to make larger payments after COVID or at the end of the first two years. At any time, borrowers can repay the loan with no penalty. To further protect Canadian taxpayers and to make sure that they share in any upside borrowers see in the recovery to come, we'll be asking publicly traded companies to issue warrants that provide the option to purchase equity or receive cash equivalents, totaling 15% of the amount received. If borrowers aren't publicly traded, they will pay comparable fees. These terms ensure that this financing facility provides financing to bridge through this difficult time, but not bailouts. Le CUJ offre aux entreprises un taux d'intérêt inférieur pendant la crise. Par contre, nous mettons en place des conditions de prêt qui protégeront les Canadiens. 20% du financement total sera considéré comme des créances prioritaires, garanties par des prêteurs existants. 80% sera un prêt non garanti, avec un bas taux d'intérêt de 5% pour la première année. Ce taux montera à 8% la deuxième année. À tout moment, le prêt peut être remboursé sans pénalité. Afin de mieux protéger les contrôlables et de s'assurer qu'ils partagent les bénéfices que les entreprises connaîtront dans la, la reprise économique à venir, Nous demanderons aux sociétés cotées en bourse d'émettre des bons qui nous donnera l'option d'acquérir des actions ou de recevoir l'équivalent en trésorerie, totalisant 15 % de montant reçu. Si les entreprises ne sont pas cotées en bourse, elles paieront des frais comparables. 
companies will need to demonstrate how they will preserve jobs and maintain essential investment activities. They'll also need to uphold collective bargaining agreements and protect workers' pensions. There'll be strict limitations on dividends, on share buybacks, and on executive pay. And there'll be requirements on environmental sustainability and tax transparency. Les entreprises devront démontrer comment elles vont préserver les emplois et maintenir leur activité d'investissement. Nous évaluerons la taille des prêts au cas par cas en fonction des besoins, mais les conditions seront standardisées, standardisées par tous. We'll assess loan, loan size on a case-by-case -case basis based on demonstrated need, but the terms and conditions will be consistent for all. This isn't only about fairness. It also makes sure that support can be delivered in a timely manner. We want to make sure that employers get the support they need to get through to better times, so that Canadian jobs are protected. Companies that apply for this financing can also continue to apply for and receive the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy, which we've now extended through until August 29th. Our economic response plan is about providing broad-based support across our economy. We're committed to helping employees at companies, big and small, in every corner of the country, because we know that we're all in this together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Operator. We're going to proceed with questions now. If we can just make sure that folks ask um, a question and a follow-up, and if you require French, please say so at the beginning. Thank you. Over to you, Operator. Thank you. Please press star 1 at this time if you have a question. Veuillez, s'il vous plaît, appuyer sur étoile 1 maintenant pour poser une question. Our first question is from Kate Bolongaro from Bloomberg. Please go ahead. Avez-vous la parole? Hello, Mr. Morneau. I'm wondering about more details about the warrants. Will the policy of the government be to seek warrants in all cases, and how will the terms be negotiated? Well, uh, thank you for the question. What, uh, what we've done here is make sure that we're providing a, a low level of interest in the first year, but one that's appropriate so that uh, employ, employers that seek this will first go to their own sources of finance. The idea behind the warrant is to make sure that if a firm does well, that uh, Canadians and Canadian taxpayers share in that upside. It will not be there in every case. If a company is, is publicly traded, the warrant will be there. Canadian government will not be required to take that uh, value in shares. It can take it in cash. In the case of private companies, there will be a cash equivalent uh, in fees that will be uh, put in place so that they will also pay the uh, similar sort of price. Follow-up question? So it didn't really answer the question. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering in terms of seeking of warrants in publicly traded companies, will that be standard across the board? And how will those specific terms be negotiated with the company? Yes, they will be standard across the board. So uh, we've put in place terms that uh, will be there on the term sheet that will see that there's standardized warrants across the board. Our broad approach here is that we recognize that uh, we need to support businesses across all sectors of the economy because we're really trying to ensure that employment continues. And in that regard, we think that the best way to do that is to have standardized terms both in terms of interest rates and in terms of the warrants that are required for publicly traded companies. Thank you. Operator, next question. Thank you. Our following question is from la prochaine question et de Philippe Vincent Foisy de Radio Canada. A vous la parole, please go ahead. Oui, bonjour, Mr. Morneau. Uh, just a question technique. Uh, la... Je peux pas vous entendre. Sorry, operator, can you re um, add them to this? They, we just lost them. Just one moment. We lost uh, the gentleman, so we'll... Uh, oh, we'll the next question. We can better. come back to him after. Certainly. So, Mr. Foisy, please go ahead. Oui, bonjour. Est-ce que vous m'entendez? Oui. Oui, bon, parfait. À quel moment, Monsieur Morneau, les grandes entreprises qui appliquent aujourd'hui vont pouvoir toucher l'argent? Donc, euh, le, la raison que nous avons euh, euh, décidé d'avoir l'application aujourd'hui qui est ouverte et d'avoir la possibilité d'avoir l'argent aussitôt que possible avec les termes qui sont standardisés euh, 
il, il peut avoir une application euh, maintenant et euh, on va considérer l'application et de cette façon, euh, euh, on va avoir une, une approche qui va avoir l'argent euh, aussitôt que possible. Puis ma deuxième question, c'est euh, ce matin, on a un sondage de la Fédération canadienne de l'entreprise indépendante qui dit qu'il y a au moins 20 des PME qui craignent de devoir être expulsés de leur loyer parce qu'ils demandent de l'aide supplémentaire pour payer le loyer. Ils disent que ce n'est pas suffisant et que ça n'arrive pas assez vite, ce que vous avez annoncé. Je crois que c'est une question très importante. Nous savons que pour les PME, le loyer est, est, est une chose euh, très difficile, sans revenu, bien sûr. C'est pour ça que nous avons introduit un programme euh, avec la le, le concurrence des, euh, des provinces. Euh, on va avoir plus de détails euh, prochainement. Et de cette façon, euh, nous, euh, nous voulons voir euh, les, euh, les gens euh, euh, utiliser le programme. Bien sûr, comme dans chaque programme, s'il y a des améliorations, des changements, on va les considérer. Mais euh, à notre avis, le programme va aider les PME et en même temps euh, aider notre économie par euh, plus de certitude euh, pour l'avenir. Thank you, operator. Uh, next question. Our next question is from Bill Curry from the Globe and Mail. Please go ahead, have the parole. Hi, Minister. Just to go back to the warrants, um, the documents talk about um, uh, the option to purchase the borrower's common share totaling 15% of the principal amount or receive cash equivalent. Are there scenarios where the federal government would be owning more than that uh, share? And presumably when you came up with this program, you looked at uh, CDEV's role with the uh, GM and Chrysler following the 2008-09 recession. Canada, the taxpayers never got their full money back on that transaction. So how does this program uh, compare with what uh, the federal government did in that scenario? Well, uh, let me take the second half of that question first, Bill. I think uh, people will compare this program to what happened in 2008, 2009, but of course it's quite different. At that stage, uh, GM Chrysler was actually in bankruptcy proceedings. What we're trying to achieve here is to make sure firms don't go into bankruptcy. So we're trying to provide a bridge financing to help people get through this challenging time and actually preserve the, the organization, preserve the jobs for the future. With respect to the warrants, uh, as I mentioned, they're, they're meant to be standardized. So uh, we're not seeking to have different terms with different companies. And uh, the government's not required to take equity. The government can actually take the cash equivalent of those warrants. So we're looking forward to um, trying to be supportive of businesses that are going through extreme stress. We know that's the best way to support employees at this time. Um, and as a follow-up, you had mentioned when this program was announced that uh, you thought it would be of interest to airlines, and uh, the program is also supposed to require companies to minimize the loss of employment. So in that light, what is your reaction to Air Canada's decision to go ahead with uh, large layoffs? We, we know that in many cases, businesses will be going through extreme challenges. What we've said is that we, we want to uh, provide support. We want businesses to try to, to minimize any, any employment loss. Uh, we do recognize that some businesses will need to go through structural change. That's going to be a reality during this challenging time. But we've been clear. We're trying to support workers. We're asking that um, employers uh, work to minimize that uh, loss of, of jobs. Our best case scenario, of course, is that we preserve firms, we preserve jobs, and we get ourselves through this time uh, and face up to you know, what will be the next challenge. Thank you. Operator, prochaine question. Thank you. Our, our next question is from Steve Shearer from Reuters. Please go ahead. Have la parole. Good morning, Minister. Um, I wanted to ask, first of all, if there was an upper limit to the loans uh, for each company. And you said that the amount that each company would get would be determined needs-based. Can you tell me a little bit more about how you will determine the need? Well, thanks. That's, uh, that's an important question. I mean, first of all, what we've said is the, the threshold size company for this program is really $300 million uh, plus. And it'll be available to you know organizations, including organizations like airports that have extreme challenges. The size of the loan uh, has a lower bound. We're expecting that the lower bound is, is $60 million or so. But it doesn't have a necessary upper bound. 
It's based on the needs for the organization for the next 12 months. So we're really looking at those cash flow needs for the next 12 months to try and bridge through the uh, COVID-19 crisis. Uh, that'll be the frame for our consideration. Thank you. Um, as a follow-up, I was wondering, you know, due to all of the emergency spending right now, um, how concerned are you uh, about Canada's AAA rating? And could you just expand on that, please? We're, we're in a position right now, obviously, that's, uh, that's very fluid. I think the, the way to think about our uh, credit standing is, is our starting point, which was strong, you know, the lowest amount of debt as a function of our economy among G7 countries. Uh, and then what we'll be looking at is our strength coming out of this. And we think that the support we're providing for employees and for employers with a program like this financing today will enable them to come out of this crisis and, and leave us with a stronger economy. And that a strong economy is essentially what those rating agencies look at in order to determine our ongoing health. So I continue to view Canada as a, as a very, in a very strong position. Uh, we're working hard to preserve our employment and our uh, economy for the long term. And we'll continue to take that approach. We believe it's, it's important to make sure that we get through this and get back to, you know, to growing our economy together, uh, which, will, which will help us to be successful and also help to ensure that our cost of, of debt is low because of strong credit ratings. Thank you. Operator, next question. Thank you. Merci. La prochaine question est de Hélène Bizetti, du Devoir. À vous la parole. Please go ahead. Oui, bonjour, M. Morneau. J'aimerais revenir sur la subvention salariale. Vous avez annoncé qu'elle serait prolongée et peut-être que les critères seraient un peu revus. J'aimerais vous entendre sur le, la justice du système. Vous pouvez avoir une entreprise, par exemple, qui a perdu 28 de ses revenus et qui aura zéro dollar et son compétiteur d'à côté qui a perdu 30 et qui recevra une, un gros montant de subvention salariale. Y a-t-il un risque, à votre avis, qu'en qu fonctionnant comme ça, sans espèce de, de critères progressifs, qu'on crée des injustices dans le système, des inégalités et qu'on qu pénalise certaines compagnies par rapport à d'autres? Merci. C'est une, euh, une bonne question. Comme vous savez... Nous avons euh, considéré notre approche avec, avec les critères nécessaires dans une situation très difficile. Euh, donc, euh, ça, c'était la raison que le, la subvention salariale a un une, euh, une critère que c'était nécessaire d'avoir une, une réduction de 30 des revenus. Mais nous savons qu'avec euh, avec, l'ouverture de notre économie, euh, c'est nécessaire de considérer si les critères sont, sont bons pour la prochaine étape. C'est pour ça que nous avons euh, expliqué qu'au moins, c'est nécessaire de délongir le, le programme jusqu'à la fin d'août. Mais euh, c'est possible qu'on va avoir les changements dans les critères d'assurer que les, les compagnies peuvent utiliser le programme euh, dans notre situation qui, euh, qui va être un peu différente chaque mois. Donc, ça, c'est notre considération en ce moment. Et quand on va... Quand on n'a plus de dire, euh, on, va, on va expliquer les prochaines étapes. Oui, je comprends qu'avec la reprise, le critère de 30 pourrait être revu. Mais moi, je vous parlais entre les entreprises. Le fait que ce soit, permettez-moi l'expression anglaise, mais une switch à 30 on, devient, on se qualifie, mais à 29 on ne se qualifie pas. Selon vous, voyez-vous que ça crée des inégalités entre les entreprises, parfois des compétitrices, qui pourraient venir biaiser le, le marché? C'est pour ça que nous, nous allons euh, considérer les critères. Nous savons qu'il qu y a des, euh, des critères euh, qui sont euh, appropriés pour notre situation qui était là il y a deux ou trois mois, euh, mais ça va être un peu différent euh, dans, dans l'avenir proche. Donc, euh, nous sommes en train de considérer les changements, comme j'ai dit, et euh, une des choses qu'on va considérer est, euh, est la situation que vous avez expliquée. Thank you. Operator, next question. Thank you. Merci. Notre prochaine question. Our next question is from Murad Demadi from The Logic. Please go ahead. Minister Mono, you said uh, the, uh, that these loans are designed. Uh, for companies that haven't been able uh, to access, uh, I believe, uh, when you first announced them, you know, uh, access 
uh, credit in, in through the normal channels. Um, will there be some sort of uh, attestation or proof required that they weren't able uh, to get this money uh, through the regular means? Well, uh, thank you. Uh, what's going to happen in terms of the administrative approach for this is that I'll be working together with my colleague Navdeep Baines and uh, with his department, the uh, Department of Innovation, Science and Industry, to look at companies that are coming into this program to make sure that it's appropriate. And uh, we think that's essential. One of the things will be that the company will uh, come in and, and give the, uh, the information required for them to uh, come into this program. They need to ensure for us that they're protecting workers, so protecting collective agreements and pensions, for example, that they're protecting taxpayers, that they're not doing share buybacks or uh, giving out dividends, uh, and that they've got limitations on executive compensation, that they're thinking about our environmental commitments, that they're putting forth uh, climate-related uh, financial disclosures and uh, telling us how they're going to contribute to our environmental goals in 2050. So there will be those sorts of, of conditions, and uh, the company themselves will have to choose whether the financing is appropriate for their needs or not. Uh, if they have other sources of capital, presumably they'll go to those sources of capital first. We're not expecting this to be uh, low-cost capital, uh, but it's really meant to support these firms through this challenging time based on uh, their need for capital that they can't get in other ways. And will loans be forgivable? I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear you. Sorry, uh, will any portion of these loans be forgivable? Uh, no. Uh, what we've, the approach we've taken to uh, providing support for uh, businesses, small and large, is recognize that you know, across all spectrums of size, uh, businesses are going to need credit to get through this time. For the smallest of organizations, for those uh, organizations that have up to $1.5 million in, in salary, for example, uh, we're saying for those organizations, they're getting a $40,000 loan and up to 25% of that can be forgivable. That's at the very small end. But as we go to the largest firms, we think that what's appropriate is that we provide financing. We provide financing that's, that's lower in cost for the first year, but, but that recognizes that we want firms to find their own source of capital as, after they get through this time, and that provides protection for taxpayers. So that's how we've, ha we've taken this approach. Uh, we think it's appropriate to support workers and, and large employers and respects the needs for, for uh, the Canadian government and taxpayers to be protected. Thank you. Operator, next question. Thank you. Our next question is from Greg Queen from Market News. Please go ahead, with la parole. Good morning, Minister. Uh, I'm wondering if you can outline your thinking around the potential for taking seats on the boards of large public companies that get this money. You know, in, in the private world, when, when you buy up a significant amount of shares, you often ask for a board seat, um, and, and the government has taken control or board seats of, of public companies in the past. Well, I, first of all, I want to be clear that um, we're talking about uh, an interest rate and uh, a warrant, but no requirement for the government to take equity. However, in the terms, uh, we do have the right to have an observer to the board of directors, which we, we think is appropriate for financing of this kind. Uh, secondly, sir, on, on provincial finances, you know, um, the provinces are facing higher health care costs and the government is, is, is providing some money for that. Um, do you expect to see pressure for a, a permanent increase of, of funding for provinces who are already struggling with their own deficits? Well, uh, I've been doing this job for about five years now, and I get constant pressure from, from every direction for sources of, of uh, finance, and certainly that comes from the provinces. We know that uh, COVID-19 has put strain on provinces, it's put strain on municipalities, and it's put strain on businesses across the, the country. So I expect that we'll have continuing discussions about those strains. We've been very supportive. The Bank of Canada has been very supportive of provinces by helping to ensure that they're, uh, they're able to issue debt. Uh, so uh, we'll continue to think about uh, how we can work together. I think we've demonstrated an approach that, uh, that recognizes that working together matters 
on things like uh, providing rent for small uh, businesses, uh, providing essential worker income top-ups. We've worked closely with the provinces to get to outcomes that we think put us in a better situation. Thank you. Operator, next question. Thank you. Our prochaine question is from Emily Bergeron of the Agence QMI. Have the parole, please go ahead. Oui, bonjour, Monsieur Morneau. Euh, quand vous avez annoncé ce programme-là, euh, vous avez précisé que les entreprises qui ont été reconnues coupables d'évasion fiscale euh, n'allaient pas avoir droit à cette aide-là. Vous devez quand même avoir une idée de quelles compagnies on parle, de combien de compagnies n'y ont systém systématiquement pas droit. Euh, on parle de, de combien d'entreprises qui ont été reconnues coupables euh, de fraude fiscale et, et, et lesquelles, par exemple, euh, n'y auraient pas droit. Donc, notre approche, euh, c'est plus large que ça. Donc, euh, on, on a, il y a cinq ans, on a, on a fait plusieurs choses avec nos homologues à travers le monde pour euh, assurer que notre système fonctionne et l'évasion fiscale est plus difficile. Donc, ça, c'est une chose très importante. On continue avec ça, cette approche. Ça veut dire qu'il y a moins de façons pour les, les grandes entreprises d'avoir une... une, une euh, une approche qui est contre les, les règles et les lois à travers le monde. Deuxièmement, chaque entreprise qui, qui veut être dans notre programme euh, doit considérer le, les fonds pour les, les opérations canadiennes. Ça veut dire que c'est pour les, les, les situations ici au Canada pour assurer que les investissements sont ici, les, les employés sont ici. Donc, ça, c'est très important. Et troisièmement, uh, on doit considérer uh, les compagnies qui ont eu des problèmes avec l'évasion fiscale. Donc, ça, c'est très important. Uh, nous allons continuer d'avoir l'opportunité de considérer la situation au niveau de taxes des, des compagnies, mais je crois que notre approche assure que les compagnies vont avoir les investissements ici au Canada avec l'argent uh, et les fonds qui sont nécessaires pour leur entreprise. Thank you, operator. Okay. Uh, Sorry, go ahead, Emily. Right. Oui, merci. Um, ben, je n'ai pas vraiment. Euh, je ne pense pas que vous avez répondu à ma question. Uh, combien d'entreprises uh, uh, ont été reconnues coupables d'évasion fiscale et n'ont donc pas droit à cette aide-là? Et aussi, uh, en sous-question, je voulais savoir, il y a beaucoup quand même de critères assortis à cette aide-là, par exemple, au niveau environnemental. Combien de temps ça peut prendre avant que les entreprises touchent l'argent? Donc, deux questions. Comme j'ai dit, euh, l'évasion fiscale est très importante et on va, on va avoir les critères que ce n'est pas possible d'avoir accès aux agents si, si une compagnie a une, une conviction pour l'évasion fiscale. Deuxièmement, les autres critères, comme le, les, les critères environnementaux, euh, nous avons expliqué que les, les compagnies doivent euh, assurer qu'ils vont avoir une, une, euh, une approche euh, qui, euh, qui assure qu'ils ils, euh, ils, ils ont une euh, approche pour l'accès aux informations sur, sur leur impact environnemental. Ça, c'est très important. Euh, mais pour l'argent, avec une attestation, nous, euh, nous allons euh, avoir une approche qui va donner l'argent aussitôt que possible. Le, les applications sont ouvertes euh, aujourd'hui et donc ça va commencer euh, très bientôt. Thank you. Operator, we are going to move towards the last two questions now. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from Paul Vieira from Wall Street Journal. Please go ahead. Good morning. Um, Minister, the head of CMHC offered, offered some very sobering um, warnings about where the real estate uh, market is headed. Um, he's talking about 20% uh, of mortgages being in arrears by the fall, um, a price correction of up to 18%. Um, are you not worried that with real estate uh, or Canadian housing, which has been a strong driver of growth, is in fact going to be a drag and thwart uh, the economy's attempt to uh, recover from this virus? induced slowdown? 
we're uh, we're obviously paying attention to to all sectors of the economy that are that are going through stress as a result of of COVID nineteen. We uh, certainly have seen the uh, the slowdown in uh, in the in home transactions, which is to be expected given that people have been under lockdown. Uh, we will see uh, continuing points of stress in our economy. What we're trying to do today and uh, what we've been trying to do throughout this is to provide a bridge for people through to the future. And that bridge is for individuals, uh, which will help them to do things like service their mortgage. And it's a bridge for companies, which will keep employment, which uh, I think, as you know, employment is the, is the key issue around people's ability to, to, keep, their, to keep their homes. So, so that's uh, been our, our continuing approach. Uh, working with the banks uh, has been an important uh, aspect of, of the, uh, the last couple of months, and we've seen a very large number of, of mortgage deferrals uh, as a result of the, uh, the conclusions that we've gotten to with the banks, which are supporting people in this challenging time. And uh, what I'm trying to make sure is that we have a strong economy coming out, and that strong economy is really what provides the opportunity for, as I said, good jobs and people to not only um, continue servicing their mortgage, but to continue thinking about, you know, buying their first house if that's what they want to do. Um, okay, then um, maybe uh, talk about buying the first house then. Um, yesterday, um, uh, the head of CMHC also suggested that, uh, you know, perhaps it's time to reconsider the minimum down payment um, on a house uh, from 5% current 5% to maybe increase the 10%. Is that something you're, um, the government has been looking at or talking to CMHC about or is even considering? One of the things that we're trying to make sure we do, Paul, is, is consider the things we need to do during this emergency time as things that are very focused on the emergency. So you see this large enterprise financing that we've announced the details for today. It's open during the time of the COVID-19 crisis. You see our employee supports as being during this time. So there will be time for us to think about systemic issues like the one you just brought up, whether there's long-term changes we need to make. But we're not looking at those uh, potential long-term changes right now. We're, we're very much focused on these, on these issues that are part of the emergency and thinking, as we are with the wage subsidy, about how we, we might um, look at our programs in a way that encourages us to get back to work in a, in a gradual and appropriate way. So that's our focus today, and we'll continue to take that approach. Thanks. Thank you, operator. We're going to move to the last question now. Thank you. La dernière question est de Louis Samuel Perron de la presse. À vous la parole, please go ahead. Oui, bonjour. Uh, concrètement, uh, Monsieur Morneau, quels seront les mécanismes pour s'assurer que l'argent ne serve pas à payer les primes et les salaires élevés des hauts dirigeants? On va avoir uh, les conditions uh, qui sont nécessaires pour protéger les contrôles pour protéger le gouvernement du Canada, et ça, c'est nécessaire. Une des choses importantes est d'avoir une condition où euh, on ne peut pas avoir plus de, de des paiements pour les, les, euh, les, les exécutifs euh, que dans nos conditions. Donc, euh, ils vont avoir une attestation et on va avoir la possibilité de, de regarder leur situation euh, comme, comme une pré- euh, uh, commercial. Donc, ça, c'est notre approche. Et s'il y a un problème, on va avoir une, uh, une approche qui va dire aux compagnies, donc, si vous, vous ne uh, considérez pas nos conditions, vous, vous, vous êtes en uh, default. Donc, ça va être notre approche comme dans une uh, situation uh, commerciale. Euh, oui, pour euh, ma question de suivi, avec les conditions qui sont quand même sévères euh, à respecter, euh, avec les taux d'intérêt qui sont quand même pas très, très bas, euh, le, le warrant, euh, en plus, est-ce que vous craignez que très peu d'entreprises canadiennes profitent du programme? Bien sûr, je ne peux pas dire euh, le nombre des, des organisations qui vont considérer le programme, mais je crois que c'est très important d'avoir une facilité qui va aider les compagnies 
qui ont une, une défi euh, important. Donc, euh, je, ce que je veux, je voudrais avoir une situation où les compagnies considèrent euh, au début leur, leur source de revenus, leur, leur crédit euh, normal, et après, s'il y, y a encore un une, euh, une problème pour eux, ils, ils vont avoir la possibilité de considérer, de considérer le gouvernement. Donc, ça, ça c'est notre approche. Ça va protéger les contourables, mais en même temps, protéger les employés et les employeurs pour, pour l'avenir. Et euh, j'espère que les compagnies euh, vont avoir la possibilité de, de faire ce qu'ils ce qu vont euh, eux-mêmes. Euh, mais euh, sinon, nous serons là pour protéger, euh, comme j'ai dit, euh, les compagnies pour l'avenir et euh, les employés pour l'avenir. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, operator. That concludes today's press Thank conference. Thank you very much, everyone.